terrible. Terrible. Okay. Warp Gore, how's it going? Steel, Super Karis, Findan, Michi, August. Does using loadouts count as gambling? Yes, because there's a good chance with the high quality coding that we have here that they're just going to completely break on you. El Patron, how's it going? CM, Miha. Terrible indeed. Let me make sure the Twitch side is live as well. That's a working. How's it going, everyone? A lot of light today. The wonders of starting the stream at 8 a.m. I thought about starting earlier, but I figured if I started too early, then it would be the opposite issue of normal, or it'd be too early for, for too many folks. Bring my chat back up. I'm just in Synthwave, not caring. So yeah, I haven't really done too much this past week. I don't think anyone really has. It's been a pretty quiet week overall for the game, which I think we we all expected that April is going to be a bit quieter uh, because there's going to be a lot of stuff you know, coming out next month. We've got the Dyson Bundle coming in May. Uh, we have a brand new season. We have the Iconian event. Uh, Trekman, how's it going? Sava? Steven? Steven, that custom 80 shipped out already, man. Apparently it's going to be here Tuesday. I was surprised how fast they shipped that out. Have I been to bed yet? Uh, I woke up at around 2 a.m. Yes. need a break before the storm yeah exactly I, I think having periods like this happen you know a couple times throughout the year is great because a lot of people get you know quite burnt out with all of the uh the the event spam so having a quieter month like this where the event that is running is not necessarily as important i think is good yeah same day shipping i was really surprised yeah. Okay, so on to the title of the stream here today. I made a mistake of putting a new device on my Delkina the other day, and it was not not even a new device. It was just a new stack of, of batteries. And what happened is that in the process of swapping the, the batteries around on my ship, the loadout appeared to, to have bricked. So... I'm going to be going through, and if that is the case, one of the, the first things I got to get done here today is get them loadouts fixed. So I'm going to swap to my Delkina, and I'm going to go up to space, and we're going to see if things actually load. My luck is, and I mean, I, I hope it's, you know, it actually goes to the correct loadout now. Um, but when I tried this the other night, it just kept saying no. It actually did go back to the loadout. Do all of the loadouts work? I'll be damned. I spent a couple of minutes the other night bashing my head up against the wall because it wasn't loading the loadouts. And now here today, it works immediately. But there was like a couple days in a row where I was trying to load the loadout on the ship and it just would not let me. It was like it wouldn't even bring the weapons back over. Okay, so scratch that from the uh, the title there. Well, stream's over then. <laughs> All I did was like I put on a new stack of, I think, deuterium and it just like completely bricked it. Lickbait? <sighs> I know, terrible. Bark, how's it going? Uh, Trekman, you picked up the World Razor and the Connie 3 over the last week? Nice. Yeah, the Delkina is still doing really good, Mark. Um, 
I've, I've had really, really good results with the Delkina. I have swapped over to the Vodwar Juggernaut for some really high-end runs, um, but I'm still on the fence about that decision. My, my concern with the Delkina in a faster-paced environment is that the experiment weapon is not holding up as well in that fast paced environment. Um, so that's why you see, I've got the gold type on right now and that also is not performing well for me. I I've just been trying a bunch of different things with the Delkina, but the, the main issue I'm running into is that I've got like a thousand percent haste for my weapons because of the Awani console, uh, with five people hitting it on me. And the, the weapons get that buff, but the experimental weapon doesn't get haste buffs. How can you reduce the number of loadouts on a ship? I don't think you can. Faster pace being, yeah, that, like Steven said, faster pace being sub 30 seconds. So we're at a point with infected runs where, um, infected elite, where we are getting to the, to that point. So... Uh, here's my Delkina run. Yeah, the, the Awani console is just insane. You get five people, or you get the, the entire team to hit it on you, and then you hit it yourself, and it just, it's absurd. Oh, this run, I remember the start. Oh, my, my activation sequence in this one is rough. This was almost a 4.5 mil run. But, uh... The side DPS on this one was unfortunately just a tad too slow. But yeah, we're we're getting to a point where these runs are just it's insane how fast they are. So like when when that cube died, I was at four five three eight point seven a million there, so yeah. Delkina, Delkina's got, got a lot of potential. But the reason I swapped over to the Juggernaut is just because the, the extra turret would benefit from the haste. So it's a pig to fly, but the, the theory is that the Vodwar Juggernaut, you know, in this environment, this, this really high-end environment should still have more potential. I Oh, and I hit the Iwani console for OSS in this run. Mistake on my part. Do I see a hard wall, you know, you can't reach unless the game fundamentally changes. The biggest limitation with the game right now is server performance. When there's an event going on, the, the server performance is drastically different than, than how it is when there's not an event going on. It, the, the game just can't handle all the, the stuff going on. But yeah, the, the VOD jug bit of a pig to fly, but in theory, in that really high-end environment, should be able to beat out the Delkina, because the experimental weapon on the Delkina doesn't benefit from haste. The Husnock plus Sensor Baffler? Yeah, I'd love, a, love to see the Mirrodorn console unlocked. You can reclaim loadouts on ships if you completely discharge the ship. Of course, if it's a lockbox ship, you can't do that. Yeah. Um, Billy, how's it going? I have to admit, I don't really get all this DPS stuff I play for... Yeah, there, there's there's different ways to play the game. My The, the way that I play the game is, is very different from, from most people. I don't do randoms. Um, I, the, the only TFO content I really do nowadays is really heavily coordinated content with a team. I, I do enjoy the the challenge aspect of like pushing for, for higher DPS numbers. Um, trying to see how fast we can complete a map, things like that. Um, but a lot of the the random cues that we have in the game, you know, they were interesting. You know, the the first couple times I did them, but there, there's a couple of the cues out there where, as soon as I join into them, my my reaction is I'd rather just Alt F4 and play a different game. Early, yes, Storm, I know. Yeah, the Mirrodorn console being unlocked would be really good for 
build diversity. The Mirror Dwarven console is really good, and I do have that on SOB, so let me show you that one. Corfez makes you cry. I like Corfez, but it, it sucks if there's not a coordinated team in there. And if you get the bugged phase, who knows if Cryptic's ever going to fix that one. Guys, okay, Toolf, how's it going? Yeah. Yeah, exactly, Steven. That's the, the fun of playing STL and doing DPS runs is the, the server performance can make or break how well things are going to go down. Okay, so let me swap to the Mirror Dorm. Timothy, how's it going? Could be at 10 or 11. Yeah, somewhere around there, Chadwick. What am I at? And yeah, I'm at 10 right now. Any luck getting close to Hans? Now, um, we've been really refining the, the split run strategies over the past couple of weeks, and um, we, we've gotten things down pretty well. Um, I, I personally, I, I think that in a situation where everything goes right, where the servers are not just just utter crap, then I think... Five mil might just be doable. Empress Christie, how's it going? Mark, yeah, it's Nick's pushing the twerp side of things. I'm pushing the the do side. I had a four point six, but we had a loose sphere on that one, unfortunately. Um, but I think with the the right run, with how fast do can get through things with all that haste, yeah. Nice. Running glass, how's it going? Yeah, uh, Nick's doing the twerp side, I'm doing the do side. Uh, Steven here, uh, Gilgalad, he's also pushing the, the do side. And Steven, your record, that was with the, the strike still, right? Cheops, I don't remember what Cheops was using in his run. Was he in the, uh, the Mirror Warship? Yeah, CSV. Yeah, if you're pushing DPS with energy weapons, it's you're either using CSV or you're not pushing for DPS. It's still the same there. The other firing modes are... Well, when you're looking at energy weapons and you're looking to push top-of-the-table DPS numbers, it's still CSV. Any other firing mode is not really competitive. Yeah, Slyne is pretty early. Yeah, I don't remember if Cheops was in the Mirror Warship or the Jug in his record. I guess I can look here. That might have been. That might have been the... Uh... Mere worship for him. Now he's got type sevens. Oh, was owned. Was he in the uh, the disco D seven? I don't remember. Uh, yeah, cannon scatter volley is what uh, CSV is for. Yeah. Um. Cryptic seem to have not heard the feedback of better duration extender trait for Faw. Yeah, the Fire at Will. If Fire at Will had a better duration extender, it would be a bit more competitive. You can still do well with Faw. You can still do well with Beam Overload and all that if you if that's what you're wanting to do. Uh, but with the the current situation, the the current meta, if you're looking to to push the number as high as it can go and you're using energy weapons, then it's, it's CSV. Anything else, and you're not chasing DPS records. Uh, CSV is Cannon Scatter Volley. 
Um, the big thing is that we've had this year is the the Iwani. The, the Iwani has really powerful hangar pets on it, but it also has a console on it that gives a massive amount of firing cycle haste. Um, but the, the, the Miradorn here, the reason I swapped over to this was I wanted to show you guys the, the console off this. Um, this is what we were talking about a few minutes ago. This console, if it was un unlocked and any ship could use it, would be a must-have for a lot of builds. This this console gives 15% crit chance, 33% severity, and then it also provides an, a Raider and Intel flanking damage buff for 20 seconds. So really good clicky on this. If this thing ever gets unlocked, it, it would make the, uh, the Captain Picard bundle pretty much a a good bundle to actually go in and pick up. Yeah, the the thing with CSV is because it's it's piloting based, you, you have to, you know, it's got that narrow firing arc. It should always be the top performer for for do. Yeah, absolutely Chadwick, absolutely. Well, Stuka, the good thing is, is if if they do ever put it into a Muds bundle and you are in a position where you miss the initial sale, they do always put Muds bundles on sale again in the future. So you might have to wait a little bit, but it will eventually be back on a 50% discount. Okay, so um, Mark, let me show you the Awani console. Yeah, most people that actually get in and try CSV, they uh they don't end up going back to to the uh the other firing modes. Okay. Um, so the, the console off the Iwani is the fleet power network array. And this is something that you can click on an ally, but you do also count as your own ally if you want to use it on yourself. So do whoever has it marked on them and up to 12 pets that they control, it will provide a plus 50 to plus 125% buying cycle haste buff for energy weapons. And that scales with ox power. It can go over 125. I, I know Chell was talking about the, the legendary Galax, where if you use the the plus power console that has plus OSS3 on it, you could potentially get well over 200% haste from this thing. Um, so this stacks up for, for each person putting it on the target. So in a coordinated run, we'll have four, four supports that are putting this on the... the DPS player, and then the DPS player has their own copy of it, and it's just a massive amount of firing cycle haste. Has the fleet power network array replaced Domino? Yeah, um, on very high-end builds, we're, we're not running any other haste now, basically. We're getting all the haste from, from fleet power network array. Um, so, with the with the really high-end runs, the, the really coordinated ones, we're at a point now where, like on those record runs, we're, we're not even running emergency weapon cycle. We, we've dropped every other bit of haste off the build. Mac, how's it going? Uh, Alpatron, that was resolved. Um, Cheops, is this good sleep schedule, Spencer? I woke up at 2 a.m., Cheops, so... Yeah. Um, Roscoe, could I possibly go a bit more in depth with the ability bar layout? Okay, so, um, for, for my ability bar, yeah, you know, I'm using the keybinds that I showed off in the, the keybind video the other day. Um, my tray 10 is my main spam bar. That's my constant rotation abilities. So up front, I have cannon scatter volley. Your main firing mode should always be up front. Do not put another firing mode immediately behind your primary firing mode. Put some other abilities like your attack pattern, 
um not your attack pattern alpha your i'm i'm saying you're like your beta omega delta whatever you're using put those second then do like chemocyte if you have another firing mode having it separated by two to three abilities is good you can put that there then distributed targeting uh tractor beam catapult and then i had direct energy modulation and my emergency powered subsystem abilities <clears throat> the big mug of coffee you have that glass storm i think i got it from like walmart i don't remember walmart or target dark ghost how's it going The sensor phantom projector is a good console, but the the thing with that is this, it is a pretty substantial flanking buff while it's active. The issue is in a fast paced run that that active part of it's not going to be there the entire time. Of the outfit, yeah, this is this is what my Delkino looks like now. Cat, how's it going? Yeah, do is competitive because of the Iwani. Yeah, really good to see there. I mean, I can cloak. Yeah, Steven. Val Valerie, how's it going? Prototype section 31? Yeah. Um, then for my alpha keybind, that's got my attack brand alpha, OSS, uh, go down fighting, DPRM, adaptive merge systems, if I have that on, um, my battery, the vulnerability assessment sweep, target on my mark or fire my mark, and then my TAC and Intel fleet. I do have multiple keybind sets. So when I look at my tray here, let, let me just do a breakdown here. Let's open up paint. So my main, my main a keybind here is gray 10. That's, that's the F key. So we'll put here F. X is really small. Yeah, so F is going to go and activate my tray 10. Uh, let's do the, the second here. This is the G key. And this is like my, this is what I would call like the alpha tray. This is where my big damage buffs are. So I don't want to hit this all the time. I just want to hit this during the strategic points in the run where I'm going to benefit from getting all those, those damage buffs where I'm going to get the most impact out of them. And I generally actually do my, uh, my torp keybinds here. So tray eight is another tray that I can use if I want. And what this does is this is going to be the C or Chadwick. Thank you for, for the three. Yeah, the, much appreciated. Whiskey Tango, how's it going? <laughs> Terrible storm. Um, and this is going to be either from me hitting C or V. And this is just another spam tray. So I can put whatever I want there. And if I want to have another spam tray, then, then I've got it right there. And for, for the rest of the abilities here, um, a lot of this is going to be manually hit most of the time. Um, down here, 
tray one is actually my space bar, which I know sounds sounds weird, but this is where I do have my space bar keybind set up to. So I usually just put like my hanger pets down there and the, the launch hanger pets, and that usually does fine. So right there, I have now taken out, you know, 40% of the, the tray. Now, the abilities that I'm usually going to be manually hitting are going to be typically for me in tray seven here, seven or eight. And I only really need to hit some of these during specific points of the run. So for, for instance, right here is Lure Team Command. This is the console off of the Gorn Hunter. I know I'm going to be hitting that just at the start of a run during the briefing phase. So I can go in and just manually hit that. Um, very cold in space and delayed overload cascade right here. These I'm going to usually try to, to manually hit, but I will sometimes put those on a key bind. So in some cases, I may have those on like my my tray eight here. And then my reputation abilities, I know that I'm only going to hit those usually at the very end of a run. So I'll usually just hit those manually. The tray six stuff here. I pretty much ignore. I just leave the shield stuff on here because if I take it off, it's going to be dumped right back on the next time I load into a map. The tray five, the cloak is the only thing I'm hitting here. And then I have my evasive embrace for impact, deuterium and uh, temporal negotiator. I usually just manually hit those. So I, I have them in a spot pretty consistent on most of my builds so that I remember where they are. So. There, there's a lot of stuff on the tray, but there's also a lot of it here that can pretty much just be ignored. So uh, trays six and five, you know, for the most part, I don't really look at them. Um, pack initiative usually ends up being on one of my upper spam bars there. So pretty much ignore those also. And the, the tray two stuff, yeah, that just is another spot where things got dumped. So really this is this is the part of the tray that i'm going to be focusing on and again some of this stuff would be up in the spam trays if the the loadout had fully loaded correctly um but some of these are going to just be manually hit and i've pretty much got muscle memory as to where they are so i can go in and hit them when i need them in the run if that hopefully that makes sense there saberson how's it going Why do I have space between abilities? Um, so the, the, the idea with the space between abilities is for, for things that I'm going to be manually hitting, the, the idea there is that there's some separation. So if I do have to look at the tray, I can identify, you know, what part of the run am I at? So I might have, you know, the things I'm going to be hitting during like phase one of an infected and I'll hit them there. If I'm at phase two, yeah, you know, hey, I've got another set of abilities here that I can, can go in and hit. And if I have to look at the tray. I know that they're in the, the second grouping that I have there. And then if I need to hit something during the third phase, I've got them separated and right there. What's the Pentagon in tray eight? That's the Excelsior 2 console. I mean, on the spam trays, um, that's where, so like adaptive here should be up there, but because STO is STO, the, the loadout got screwed up a little bit. But yeah, th those usually are going to have abilities on most spots. Um, super curious. Uh, chi ops when we're doing our runs we we've got the you know someone on the supporting team hitting their their team bat so i just run the normal energy amplifier the or the advanced energy amplifier battery myself and then i get the aux power from a teammate yeah this did not load the the correct loadout for for the ship unfortunately
but I, I really do enjoy that it's, you know, made my duck, you know, look like my character again. It is also funny just seeing how fast the legs move. And if you have this happen in sector space, it just goes crazy. So let me swap over to my VOD jug because that's got, I just redid the loadout for that recently. And the trays. This is an improvement. Mark, how's it going? So this is probably a better example of my tray setup um, where you can see that there's there's some separation for for where I'm hitting things in a run. Um, I've got the the main spam bar filled out the the alpha spam bar also filled out the the uh, tray eight here. I'm just using to manually click. I'm not I don't I'm not using that key bind here, um, but I've got the stuff that I'm hitting at the start. So lure team, I'm going to hit during briefing phase for my first uncon proc. Then right as I'm about to go in, I'm going to hit uh, fleet power and enhanced induction coils. I've got a torp spread here. I don't have a torp on, but I want to hit this as close to zero as I can to get to the, the damage buff from a cultural conquest, the trade off the world razor. Then during the second phase, I'm going to be hitting agony redistributor on the left transformer. And then at the middle, I'm going to be hitting like juggernaut array and all these other rep clickies, and then I have a new car web breaker on just to try and squeeze a little bit of extra damage out of the build. What's the nicest looking Vandy shield from the reputations? Probably Lucari. Uh, Rick, um, there's the PayPal or like the, there's the stream elements uh, thing there. I don't think that has much of, much of a fee. She ups. Is the VOD jug still the best new platform? I think for like just pure energy weapon damage output, it, it it's still it's still a beast. It just sucks to fly. It, it sucks so much. Yeah, Rick. Um, pop it open. Yeah, the, the challenge stream. Yeah, it's so it's the the tips link in the description here. Um, but the the challenge stream is going to be me playing through the entire storyline on a new character. And. <laughs> thank you for for the 20 there, and it's going to be lots of suffering because I'm probably going to do like uh probably going to do it on like an engineer because that's what people are going to want. Keep stopping the new characters again. Rick, thank you for the 20. Much appreciated. That's a 5 million DPS build right there. Ink Warrior versus Fodwar Juggernaut. If you're if you're looking to to do as much damage as possible, the Vodwar Juggernaut is still the, the king. The Inquiry is good, but when you're really pushing peak performance, every little bit counts. Um, for example, I've decided to take the Wide Arc Dual Heavy Cannon off of my, uh, my, my DPS build here and replace it with just another normal Viridian Dual Heavy Cannon because in the parse, I was seeing that the the loss of damage from losing that one modifier was a noticeable damage drop for the wide arc versus the dual, the dual heavy cannons that I had on. For normal gameplay, you know, that that wide arc's perfectly fine and probably going to be advantageous to run. But chasing max DPS every little bit counts and losing that one damage modifier was visible. In fact, let me, I want to see, was that?
The, the legendary inquiry is going to be close, yeah. It's not perfect, but it's going to be close. Okay, so by this point, I, it looks like I'd already swapped. Rick again? Thank you. Yeah, basically warp core. So the wide arc really wasn't doing anything for, for my build in this environment. Yeah, I gotta find where that combat log file is. Give SCM a minute here. Yes, I remember this is the night Nick Nick did a ton of runs. Okay, yeah, here's an example. Okay, so this is a run where I had the wide arc of uh, dual heavy Viridian plasma cannons on, and then I had three uh, dual heavy non wide arc cannons on also and if you look at the damage numbers here you, you can see that compared to the three dual heavy viridians i had on that that wide arc was not performing at the, the same level so if i take that number and divide it by three you can see that they were doing about 23 24k less dps than what each of the other cannons on were doing so that that's the point where i took the the wide arc off and decided to go out and pick up another another cannon rick i would say for anything pvp related uh to check out brett's gaming channel he's going to have the most up-to-date pvp uh information for you PvP is something I used to do in this game, but I, I have since moved far away from. So I, I have a weird bug for, for you guys, and I'm curious to see if any of you are having this issue also. Um, but I was looking at Ship of the Line as a potential trait to, to put on my build, and... The issue that I was having is that I would want to hit emergency fired weapons first in in the ISC runs. And with my Delkina here, I am using the Delta Operations Expansion Pack uh, engineer that has superior subterfuge and superior Romulan operative on it. But every time I load into a map with this bridge officer. Thank you for, for the sub there, Roscoe. Much appreciated. Um, but every time I'm loading into the, the map here, my emergency part of weapons is on cooldown. Barosco again. Thank you for that. Um, P6X2, what is this? Yeah. People skip the specialization skill tree. I just... Roscoe, what I do for, for my specializations is pretty much I just run Intel Primary, Temporal Secondary. And then I pretty much just leave that on for, for almost every build I do nowadays. Strategist is fine if you want to do that as a secondary. But for, for me, especially with the Plasma stuff, Intel Primary, Temporal Secondary works, works very well. Um, okay, so back to this issue with this Bridge Officer. If I load into a Jupiter Gauntlet, pay attention to my emergency part of weapons there, and you're going to see that as I load in, it's on cooldown. Really weird issue. Short, how's it gone? Is the Disco 3P still worth getting for casual theme builds? The Absolutely. Rob, how's it gone, man? But you see, my emergency part of weapons is on cooldown. I haven't hit it. 
It is just this ridge officer that seems to be broken, and I'm curious to see if any of you have encountered similar issues with some bridge officers. Best space plasma weapons for CSV. I'm I'm biased towards the Viridian. I think that they look really cool, but performance wise, you can pick whatever flavor you like the, the most and you'll be fine. There, there's not really a performance difference that's noticeable between the variants. Same on console, it's crazy. Uh no, Rob. Um haven't really done any runs this this past week. Uh, the servers were not great last weekend, and everyone's been uh, been out. Thinking ads. So, uh, Roscoe, the answer. Well, thank you for for the sub there again. Um, but the answer, the answer is I just run Intel primary, temporal secondary on all my builds. Okay, so as I head back into new ROM space, notice that the bridge officer again has has a cooldown on immersive power to weapons there. And it's just with that bridge officer. So you can see right there it's on cooldown again. So if I put on a different bridge officer, that resolves the issue, but it's just you know what what a weird issue. They have to have with the bridge officer. Yeah, eventually, Roscoe, you just you you get to pick every single ability from each specialization. So the 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 reason um you don't see people talk about them too much is because eventually you get all of them. So you you eventually get all of the specialization abilities. They will never in a million years fix this, Spencer. I know. That's why I've got a different uh, bridge officer set up here now. So I'm going to go in. And I'm going to save this after I change this, this device here. But yeah, absolutely. That is something that will never be fixed. I'm going to move some of these powers around so that they're a bit more organized. Yeah, I well the the TAC one's fine, but the it's the engineer one specifically that I'm having issues with. Might just be mine. I, I haven't actually looked at it on other characters yet. But now that I've changed that bridge officer, if I go back into Jupiter Gauntlet, what you're gonna see is that it should now be fine. Uh, yeah, Mark, the, the Silic or Blackguard are still basically the only viable support platforms for high-end play because of IFF. And that Emerged Power Weapons is not on cooldown. For the regular skill tree, is it pretty much the same build for all energy builds? Yeah, pretty much. It's it's almost always going to be a tackle ult setup. And uh, for that, there is detailed skill tree breakdowns over in the builds Discord. So I know that there's a lot of channels over there. Um, but if you go to channel shortcuts up at the top, there should be a section here for for the skill tree. Or did I not put one? Let me add one. And skill trees. There we go. So there is a shortcut in it, the channel shortcuts channel now that will take you right to the skill tree talk area. And then if you expand that, there's some completed skill trees. And the one that I'm running is up at the top in there. And I have arrows at the bottom of the picture to indicate 
if I chose the, the first or second option. Spectral Stargazer, how's it going? Yeah, I mean, at this point, who who's even left there to to try and replicate it? Um, anyone get got hay fever? I I think for for me, it's just been the the cold and then heat and then back to the cold. The the weather here can't make up its mind. Yeah, let me drop you a link to the builds Discord. Yeah, that's that's a link to the builds discord um lots of channels in there so make sure to use that channel shortcuts thing at the top um but there's there's completed skill trees in there yeah i i haven't even yeah right now it is 37 out yeah, it's so 53, 62, back into the 60s. Looks like it's going to be a bit stable next week. Axel, how's it going? Basically the, the end of it at this point. Glad you're feeling better. Uh, what do I think is better, the Excelsior 1 or 2? Um, it depends on what you're going for. I, I think both platforms have viable builds you can put on them. Um, neither of them is going to be DPS competitive, but in both of them, the, the Legendary 1 and the, the Excelsior 2 can both work well for, for beam setup. The Excelsior 2 for, for Surgical Strikes. The Excelsior 1 is Smirk Worker Pilot, if I recall. So that'd be more for your traditional, like, beam overload, FAW type setups. Been so long since I made a do tune. What level does rep open up? 50. Yeah. Um. I'm going to swap characters. I'm curious to see if that bridge officer issue is going to persist over on a different character with the same bridge officer. That is definitely one of those bugs that will never be fixed because... Bindan uh, does only... Let me check that quick. That's a good question. So if I put emergency power to shields on, does that have the same cooldown issue? Um, Elpatron, definitely. I, I think that's a very strong option for that. I, I'll be honest. I, I haven't really looked at like the Jupiter station brought up a number of merge part of shields is not a cooldown, so it's just merge part of weapons. One of the first um, steps toward addressing them. I haven't really looked at surgical strikes builds in quite some time. Um, in general, single target builds just are not something I really pay much attention to. Mark, thanks for stopping by. Um, oh, yeah, you've got plenty of time to do the event. Anything new Star Trek related coming up? Like a new movie. Um, you know, Discovery's on right now. I haven't watched the uh, too much of the season yet, but got Lower Decks, you know, later this year, the final season of that. Movie-wise, I don't know. But yeah, Elpatron, I think the Cardassian Flight Deck Carrier would be pretty good for Surgical Strikes 3 right now. Um, if it, I don't know if I would say it's the best, but definitely pretty strong. I do not yet have that stanky. I might go uh, grab that, but yeah, Spectral Stargazer, the elite type seven pets are pretty much the meta pick right now. The nice thing about the type seven pets is that you don't have to put like scramble on. You don't have to put hanger pet consoles on. 
you just slot the pets on and you focus on buffing up your weapons like you would with any other build and the pets just contribute a lot the, the amount of debuff they bring in is nuts no that th those pets are the meta pets right now because they they have huge battle impact and you don't have to put a ton of stuff on trying to buff them up Axonars finally do this year. Uh, Roscoe, there's nothing wrong with the Dilithium Exchange, so there's not going to be a fix for that. That That's just the, the market playing out the way it was designed. There There is Dilithium up on the market right now, but it's, it's in a backlog. I think we're going to see a bundle sale pop up this Thursday. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna put that same bridge officer on. Okay, it's on right now. And I'm gonna load into a patrol quick and I just wanna see if it's on cooldown. Uh Mark the Chief, I don't know. I mean ideally that would be nice, but they were working on that team stuff for, for like a year, so I don't, it's not on cooldown here, so it's just an issue on casual. Fourteenth bundle versus flashback. The the fourteenth is going to have more meta impact because of the uh, the Awani. But just keep in mind with the the meta impact of the fourteenth bundle that is basically the the Awani. And the Atlantis trait for, for some builds, but the, the Iwani alone is the, the big part of the bundle. And that is a ship that you can get on its own. So if you go for for flashback, or you already have the T6 Stargazer, then then probably go go for flashback or just wait and see what we get next month. How's how's the the ship by the way? Um, I I still use it. I I'm not using it right this moment because for my audio interface, I am using my Moto M2, so I can get um the the monitoring on for for the microphone. But when I'm not doing videos, I'll plug into what is it, the the shit Asgard um back that I have, and that that still works very well. What a great name for a company, too. S-C-H-I-I-T. What a great name for a company. Uh, from what I've seen in Infamy, the, the first contact day event has been, uh, like, nerfed before release. It's not that great. Nice, Mark. Okay, so a suggestion here was to grab the Merge Part of Weapons 3 from K13, so I'm going to give that a shot. Let's head over there and grab that. Um, Roscoe, if you look at the wiki page for it, you can see the previous times it's been added into the game. Um, and it, it, usually, it usually pops up around the same times each year, so I'd say check the wiki in that regard. How has the event been nerfed? Um, that's not the, the correct wording on, on my part. They decided to make the first contact day event reward um, not be super powerful because they didn't want it to be a must have item. So the, b before they released it, they decided to make sure that it was released at a power level that would make it not be a must-have from a meta point of view. This is not the right NPC. I have not bought one of these training manuals before from this. Okay. This is why we have filters. 
Oh, that's not bad price-wise. I was worried it was going to be expensive. x Jim, how's it going? Yeah, from, from what I've heard, the Photon Launcher is not great. Um, there's a question about the, the Dyson bundle. Um, and, and Cat, I don't know when the next upgrade weekend will be. Um, so what, what's everyone's opinions on the upcoming T6 Dyson Science Destroyers? Um, we don't have any stats for, for those yet. Um, that, that's still, you know, a couple weeks out, but, but I, I'm sure, sure they'll be amazing. I, I, I had some, some comments on, uh, my video yesterday saying that I shouldn't be, you know, super negative about them. Um, so, you know, we, we haven't seen the stats yet, so th th there's still hope that, Whoever's designing them has a good understanding of the game and will give us some highly impactful items. I don't know if I'm going to get the bundle. Uh, that, that's that's my thoughts. Um, I saw the stats in a dream. I just say that if they, what I'll say here is if, if there is a bundle sale next week, like we're expecting, and you have another bundle that you've been eyeing for, for some time, I would, I would spend your Zen on that rather than, than holding out, you know, in hopes of the Dyson bundle being, you know, something impactful. Yeah, Dyson. You know why, Stephen. Uh, guys, to if yeah, yeah. Um, if you want an invite to to my fleet on the Fed or KDF side, uh, we have we have plenty of slots. Um, Phil, Phil Monk, I just, I. I I, I I think that well we're seeing the impact of Jonathan not being the, the one designing things right now, and I have little faith you know, about the the potential impact and value of these ships. Yeah, Jonathan had a he got no faith of the heart. Correct. I have no faith of the heart right there. Yeah, Jonathan definitely seemed to have a good understanding of how how the game worked and was able to insert new items into the game that uh, that had a nice impact on the way that the game is played at a high level and. With him gone there, I'm not too confident. Did that fix the issue? Let's see. Is my emergency part of weapons on cooldown? It is not. So getting the version of emergency part of weapons 3 from K13 did resolve the issue. Thank you for, for bringing that up. Yeah. Yeah, the, the streams, Jonathan definitely seemed to be quite a bit more excited about the, the game than others. Um and that's generally always been one of the 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 issues with like dev relations with this game is most of the most of the streams we've watched uh with most of the community managers over the past several years, um it just has felt like there wasn't actual much in in interest on their part with the the actual game itself so having people on the streams that were actively interested in the game was was very nice and jonathan did bring a lot of a lot of energy to the streams that is 
very much missed. Um, for whatever reason, Mark, my emergency powered weapons three that I had on my bridge officer when I would load into a map, it would be on cooldown. And now that I've swapped to the K13 version of emergency powered weapons, that issue was resolved. It only happens on this character with this specific bridge officer. So really weird issue, but it seems to be fixed. What new bundle am I expecting to be released soon? Uh, the Dyson one. The Dyson bundle is coming next month. Cryptic already announced it. Not every bundle needs to be special. Having substandard ships is perfectly healthy for the game. Let's uh, let's play some content. Okay. Yeah, we know Mud's bundle is going to be dropping in uh, May or June. I mean, the Dyson bundle drops in May along with the new season. And then there's going to be uh, a new Mud's bundle in June. Hopefully it's got a crossfield refit in it. I really need a refit for, for a couple characters. So hopefully they would do a bundle like that to line up with the end of Discovery. Uh, Guys, Wolf, what's your character or your, your at handle? I'm on KDF side right now. I can just invite you. The thing to keep in mind is that with Science Destroyers, that means that they're going to have a lot of, of fixed non-size seating on them. So if you're hoping that... Uh, that these upcoming science destroyers are going to, you know, be something that's competing with a ship like the Vern, the Edelg, the, the Lucari uh, scout ship. Your expectations are not in the right place. The, these are science destroyers, meaning that they're going to have quite a bit of tactical and engineering seating locked on them. So for for the builds you're going to want to be putting on these, it's going to be do Psy or Psy Torp. And the question is, how are they going to compete against the other hybrid ships out there? The Chekhov, for example, you know, it's a recent one that that people have really liked uh, for for Dusai. Because you're in a fleet right now. Oh yeah, Martin. I, I imagine it would it would be hard for them to release something worse than the the Titan. So, not that the Titan is bad, but you wouldn't really be able to put something out in twenty twenty four that would be worse stat wise than that. I would imagine. Ryan, do not even have that expectation, man. I'm telling you right now, you will be setting yourself up for disappointment. The Chekhov is great for SS3. Guys, Wolf, no problem. Won't be till the end, literal end of May and mostly in June, according to the EP on the stream. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember. Oh, no, Cheops. It's the first thing I've seen said in fleet chat in a long time. Yeah. Most likely Spectral Stargazer. Okay, let's let's do, do a run of some sort here. Okay. The only queue that I know how to do is infected. So let's start off with one of them. But let's let's shake it up a little bit. Let's let's see some casual piloting here. I hope for a new sovereign in the Zen store with the Fox Sender.
arc. You know, none of that's going to happen, man. Do a viewer. Well, I'm, I'm going to do, do a fast run here, uh, Steven. Cheops, you still watching? Gonna let you down here. Okay, I'm gonna do Infected, the Conduit Advanced, and the Vaudoir Jug. ISA. We have a couple sovereigns in the game, but none of them are uh, really that spectacular. Activated the robot code. Terrible. Cheops, did you see Nyx infected advance the other day? It was so stupid. We did a two man and he just went around the map with the Zeagle, just getting as much overkill as he could. I think he uploaded it too. Yeah, so look at that. It was it was like 75 seconds, but he had 98 million damage. With how fast the uh, the ISE runs have been getting, I, I figured ISA might actually be good practice because you just go in with a do build and just try to nuke it fast. And with me now using Temporal Surge on my DPS build in ISE, works pretty well. Situation is grim. All attempts to hail the star base have been. I just wish that Temporal Surge didn't require or you didn't have to go in and slot it and uh, or deslot it and then slot it when you get into the map. That's a bit, a bit annoying that it works like that. Yeah, pretty much. It's what you gotta do. I forgot that. I missed a back gen over there and I don't have my E2 console on. I forgot to put it back on. Oh, this is terrible. That was terrible on my part. Here we go. Sensors confirm. I'm rusty. <laughs> I watch uh, Chell do do his like solos, and it's like, damn, need to get that. Need to get to that point with the uh, handling the juggernaut. Yeah. Get a few people to hit you with FPM at the start and then just blitz through. Use Temporal Surge to get from left to right. And then nail the, the gate positioning. Yeah, I know, Cheops. I know. Low deeps. I'm going to swap over to a uh, Fire at Will build for, for the Immersion because that seems to be where my performance is at right now. Uh, so we're going to go to the Connie 3. I might pick up the uh, the Kelvin Connie 2 at some point just to play around with. Um, waiting for some stuff to, to sell, though. But that might be a fun fall theme setup. 
I need to do some uh, market manipulation videos. We got to get watchers to go up a little bit. And the Darien in there? Yeah, there was. Terrible mark. Okay. The issue with fall is that you have to use ETM, and using ETM sort of just sucks. Uh, Rascal, um, don't don't look for a build for a specific ship. That look for, you know, just look for like a a beam build for for a cruiser, or if you're doing cannons, you know, just look for for a cannon build on another cruiser, and just try to move it over to to that ship best you can. Um, generally. You don't want to necessarily look for for builds for specific ships. Just look at how you know other other builds are are put together, and then just translate it to that ship. Yeah. Just get McStud to talk about Watchers. Yeah. Well, I I do actually think that with people going to Isomangs that. Watchers are probably better than SROs for most people. Brilliant, how's it going? Mark. Okay, I'm going to do another casual TFO here. We're going to do a uh, cure, cure found advanced. I hear that this is a really difficult queue, and I've got my phaser beam array set up, ready to go for it. Eric, that'd be nice. That'd be really convenient. Yeah. She opposite did a great job with some of the, uh, the AI stuff there. Cheops. Oh no. Why detect a Wani? Hard content. Oh, my space bar is not what it used to be. I forgot to change that back. Oh, no. Couldn't even fire my torp for, for ETM there. Challenge me to run into the Derridex. Cheops, thank you for that. The electrical is because Cheops here hit me with the console off the friendship, which does a bunch of those electrical bolts that you saw. Um, that's a console that someone else has to cast on you. You cannot cast it on yourself. Challenge me to do a run in the Dideridex. I can do that. Yeah, I was just blitzing through that. Okay, the Derridex, do I have it still here? Um, it should be theirs. Could be theirs, version. They, because whoever hits the friendship console on you, they get the, the damage that you get from it, or that you do with it. Um, it's not that much. 
I think I may have dry docked my Dideridex. Um. Um. Yeah, I set this up on a stream a couple weeks back. Okay, how do I update this? Let's get the Pav and Omnion. That should be step one. Where are ya? That Pav and Proton Beam, that's the, the best set beam array in the game. There isn't really any competition to it. If you're looking to put a set Omnion, it's basically the Pav and Proton. If you don't have it, it is from the first part of the year-long event campaign, meaning that you can still pick it up for not too much. I was hoping for too much with this one. Okay. I mean, the title did mention loadouts. Just give me a minute here. You just got stowed a little bit. I did quite enjoy how when they were talking about the uh uh what is it the the first contact day reward they they made a comment about not wanting to introduce items that would be you know like must haves and then then they've released the Pavin proton beam this year which is like stupidly overpowered they've released the the Awani with the the type 7 pets which are pretty much the best hanger pets in the game and if you're running anything else, you're pretty much going off meta if you're not doing type sevens. They uh, they put the fleet power network array console out on the Awani, which is must have for do builds. It, it just was a weird statement on their part. Okay, let me get my other buffs on here. Like they released all this power creep and then they make a comment about not wanting to, to introduce items with power creep. We talk about them being disconnected sometimes, but hearing stuff like that on the 10 forwards is, is just funny. It's like they don't know the things that they've just put into the game. Oh, loadouts. So much fun. I don't have Fleet Power Network Array on, so let me get that on. Let's drop Lorca. I'm missing a few things in chat, so give me a minute and I'll get caught up here as soon as I can. The content we pay for. This is peak STO content. You dared to change one thing on your ship? Enjoy spending the next 10 minutes fixing your loadouts. I have REA on for some reason. You know what? Screw it. Let's leave it on. I want REA to just take me out. Actually, on a real note, REA is going to be too slow. Um, I should do temporal tunneling here because this is a ship that can actually take advantage of that really quite well. Okay. Save. And let's let's do Hitimer. Hitimer Vortex Advanced Public Queue. And I'm going to ground. Alan, how's it going? How's the Photon Burst Rocket Launcher? Apparently, uh not not amazing 
What is the... Oh, I am really far behind. Yeah, Isomags have helped the, the Legendary DD quite a bit. Is it the two or three piece? Uh, just run it on its own. The, the Omni Beam on its own has an effect on it where it has a very high percentage with each shot to, to do quite a bit. Rascal Thing with the $10. Thank you for the info. My model leader speaks high, highly of you in Discord. I'm a long time player, but never ventured into the depth of this game until just recently. Thank you for the content. Thank you for the 10. Very much appreciated and glad to help. Um, sorry. I'll show the Pavan beam here when I get out of this. Two active four transform the Um, I guess I got thirty seconds to show it here, but the Pavan Omni has a really high proc rate on it to stack up resonance charges that do proton damage and those do a lot of damage uh we've seen in really high-end runs where this beam even on its own is outperforming complex plasma fires on a plasma build so even on a plasma build you want to run this this omni and the great thing about it is when you hit csv it gets fire at will so really really high performing and it has great uptime on fire at will Um, yeah, Lower Decks, as far as I can see, has actually been cancelled. Okay, I am probably about 50 messages behind in chat, so as soon as I take this out, I'll bring chat up in the full window and respond to things. Wayne for Dinatra. There we go. Okay, bring in the full chat up. But yeah, the Pavan Omni on its own does quite a bit. Um, Ajuru, is there a difference between squadron and normal fighters? Most of the squadrons have pulse cannons, which interacts very well with superior area denial and offers a higher performance potential. Um, but if you don't care about that, then... I mean, it's just a few ability differences. Um, yeah, X-Gym, as far as I can tell, they are going to cancel it for good. Um, why release new things if they aren't going to be meta? It would seem self-defeating. As cryptic, that's a good question for them. Um, 26, yeah, I, I just saw your message. That is crazy. Yeah, yeah, uh, let me just catch up on chat here quick. Change is coming. Ground is the end game. Terrible. 
Maybe Jesse was just preparing people for the upcoming bundle. Oh uh, yeah, the photon burst rifle, from what I've heard, not good. Um, packed iron Nick coming up. On every build, the Pav and Omni is worth it, Valerie. The Pav and Omni is the best in slot item. Um, uh, CM, I don't believe so. Yeah, Moxnix, you need to look for the resonance charges on your parse because the resonance charges with that thing have been doing an absurd amount. Um, so if, if I look at my ISC run here, if SCM updates, the, the resonance charge, which is from the Pav and Omni, that's my second line item that did 611k DPS. So pretty damn powerful. Um, is it possible? Oh yeah, absolutely. You just do, do Admiralty and you can get a lot of the lithium from that. Rodolfo, how's it going? On fresh 65s, Admiralty, if you have enough ship, should be able to do it. Uh, that would explain some things, Mark to Chief. Infamy, I... I I think that their concern is going to be focused more on getting caught up with things rather than going back and trying to, to fix things from, you know, like 10 years ago. David? Yeah, that, that is crazy. Headless Horseman, how many you got right there? Also, if, if you guys message me like off stream and I don't get back to you, like if I'm in game, I usually just stand next to an exchange console and I pretty much just will play other games while waiting for things to sell. So don't, if I don't respond to you, just know it's probably that. Uh, more sea store ships on your account, more event ships. You, you, in order to do balancing, they have to understand what the end game environment is like, how the game is played at this level, and they have no understanding. Absolutely none. But that's always been a, a big issue for Cryptic, is that when it comes to understanding like the, the the meta of things how how the game is played they they have no understanding of it and because of that some of the decisions they've made haven't always panned out very well osiris any good changes to the game um i mean that there was uh, changes to team abilities last week which were pretty good they unlocked the the amari console but now that people have uh been able to to try it out um the, the Amari console is not as impressive as people had hoped. Is the Colony 3 worth getting? It, it's it's a fun ship. Not meta, but... Headless Horseman, I I certainly hope that the, the price goes up personally. For no specific reason. So I just saw the picture you sent to me. You've got... Like just an absurd amount of keys and you have those on live, which is the, the crazy thing. Uh yeah, Captain Kenobi, if you're if you're watching, uh Cheops here, he'd really like to, to join over on Ryza. Let's do another uh, another queue here. The only queues I know how to do are on cooldown. I guess I know how to do Hive Onslaught. Okay, Hive Onslaught Advanced Public Queue. I'm going to take the Daredex in again. Uh, I've got faith that this thing is going to just make the Borg really sad.
You down to your last thousand? <laughs> I've got a stack. They've never really understood it. That's the thing with a lot of the things they've released over the years is a lot of it is them lucking out when it comes to, uh, to, to like new ships being put in when they're looking at like their Excel spreadsheet to figure out what spec combo they want to do, what bridge officer combo. A, a lot of the, the ships I feel have been more of them lucking out. There have been some instances of things being specifically designed with high end play in mind, uh, when there were devs there that had some sort of understanding. Uh, for example, when um, Jet was there, Cryptic Spartan, she developed the Vaudoir Juggernaut, which to this day is still, unfortunately, the best energy weapon platform in the game. Absolutely, Headless Horseman. Buying new lockbox items and then flipping them a year later is, is always a great way to go. Uh, most people do not have patience to play the market, which is the biggest issue a lot of people have. Um, if you really want to make money playing the market, you need to be in a position where you can accept buying something, tossing it in a bank, tossing it in a bank for a year, and then selling it, you know, a year plus later. A lot of people rush out and will try to to get a return much sooner, and because of that, they either take much less profit or in some cases they may not I take a profit at all every, every drop speaks with my voice Your efforts are futile. Destroy this vessel, and I will claim another. Geops. Very nice. This is not the end. Okay, Ramsman, that one did not did not go very well, but that was an unexpected change. Double cutscene for the loss. Yeah. The shooting cylinder is king. It really is. Faith of the heart. Yeah, the, the Awani can, can tank if you want it to. Um, it's not going to be the most effective tanking platform, but yeah, yeah, you can do it. That was amazing. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, this is the wrong price I'm looking at. Bruno, how's it going? Yeah, Cheops. That was, that was crazy. Crazy fast. Where's Nick? Haven't seen him for a while. Is he okay? Um, yeah, I was actually just chatting to him probably about four or five hours ago. Um, he's just been busy with his with his job, and when he's been on, he just hasn't hasn't had the the, the, the mo like he likes doing stuff for his channel, but he's had other priorities. Would be the best way to put it. I think Cheops was in the, yeah, the Mirror Warship. I shouldn't be telling you guys this, but Nick's pet kangaroo got out. He's been trying to find it. That's why he, there hasn't been any videos. What is the third, the side console third slot? That's Lure Team Command. Scuba? Uh, not much. Just just been doing some some uh, some PFOs. 
This is the PC version of STO. Yep. Last isomag. I sold a couple isomags recently for, for around that price point. Uh, some beams ones were selling pretty well the other day. Oh yeah, he's fine. He's fine. Uh, be, being a hundred percent honest, just not been the biggest priority for him with other stuff going on. Um, he's still around. He's still playing the game. He just, when he has free time, he just has other things that are, have been on his mind. Did a dingo eat his kangaroo? Yes. Yeah, let's go to a different ship. What do we want here? Go back to a FAW build on the Connie. Go to the Connie uh, 3 again, or do I pull out some... Uh, some DPS build. Oof. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Okay. Infected's got a one minute cooldown until we can go through it again. Yeah, Paramount's probably going to sell uh, Star Trek, hopefully to Sony. Now, I was hearing about Sony, you know, being a, a party that's interested in purchasing Paramount. That'd be that'd be a good thing. Uh, Dan, only buy the lifetime sub when there's a 50% sale and it's on the Arc Games website. Um, Scuba, at some point, may I see your friendship build, please? I finally picked one up. Um, I don't currently have a build on the friendship the 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 friendship itself is a really good tanking platform um but the characters i have been getting it on i've been getting it for the trait and then the trait goes on to to my other builds but the the friendship itself as a tanking platform um i i don't have any builds for it up right now but there might be one over in the builds discord The lifetime, yeah, if you're on PC, the lifetime gets the 500 Zen stipend. If you're on console, there is no Zen stipend. Uh, you're trying to find a... Uh, the Duder stat is not great, Headless Horseman, and the, the trade on it is currently broken, though apparently it's been fixed internally, so maybe it'll get better once, once they uh, push that out live, but yeah, right now, not amazing. Gotcha, Dan. Then I, I don't know what to say there. Okay. I'm going to ground, then I'm going to queue for another ISA. But yeah, for the Connie 3, I have a build posted in the Casual Sab Discord under the Spencer's Builds channel, and it's just a FOSS setup with the Disco 3 piece, which just tears through uh, normal and advanced content, um, which I'll show you here. Infected the conduit advanced. Here we go. Split ISA, go right. Okay, gotcha. Is the strike worth getting? Um it, it's okay. It, it's it's a capable platform. It's not as capable as something like the Vodwar Juggernaut, but if you like the visuals of it, it's it does well. The situation is it can hold its own. The trade off of it does have some use cases if you're able to get enough of the procs of it on your build. We're doing a we're, we're doing a split here, so this should be a bit faster. Yep. 
Cheops. Sensors confirm that the transwarp conduit has been destroyed. However, our scans of the starbase are still being disrupted. We will need to send an away team. Oh, uh, yeah, this is just advanced. I mean, Elite can get this this fast, but only with really coordinated teams. Yeah, my, my studio lightning did a bit, and then Resident Shock also did well. The Excelsior 2 console did really well there for, for me. 104k out of it. Really OP builds, I mean, that, that's true too. The, uh, the higher performing builds do have some very expensive parts on them that do help quite a bit. Eric, how's it going? Or, oh, you're leaving. Oh. Time for work. Have a nice day. Yeah. Thanks for stopping by. Um, sorry, I'm misreading messages here. I need more coffee. Need a lot of coffee. Uh, Victor, you have a promo ship box. Can't decide what to pick. If you're on PC, remember you can copy it over to, to Tribble a couple times and try out some of the different options there. I need to update the uh, the fun code here because I forgot to. Oops. 70. Okay. Um, think about how it is to be a crew on casual ship. EB, okay, boys, kill that board ship in three seconds flat, or you all pull double shift for the next month. Roscoe, is it better to do advanced for rep farming for speed or elites? Um, I would say advanced because there's lower team requirements. If you get into an elite with a really undergeared team, it's going to be a very rough experience, whereas in advanced, you can pretty much build yourself up to just solo it. Well, while I wait to the next 40 minutes for my next daily progress, I'll work on getting my Cation Delta to level 10. Nice. I have a Tetron build on console, but would like to start a PC build. Yeah, Tetron, Tetron's capable. I mean, honestly, every every damage type is capable. Each of the sub damage types, they're, they're all capable of doing very well. <laughs> Giant Dutch Viking. A while ago, you mentioned you were doing vids almost every day, but expecting it to slow down. Can can I tell about upcoming vids? I am working on some. Some guides that that I'm hoping are going to be um, more general knowledge, long term videos. Um, the the daily uploads that they they were causing a little bit of burnout, which you've probably seen over the past month or so. Um, I want to get to a point where I'm at two to three videos a week. One of those being a news video. And then the, the one to two streams alongside that a week. The guides, I think. I, I know that guides are not necessarily going to be the, the most interesting thing to, to everyone, but I think getting some foundational knowledge out there would be beneficial. And, you know, that that's something that performs very well over time. Um... Osiris. Yeah, yeah, it's going fine. Any ship is also capable of doing well. It's just some are well suited to certain roles than others. Yeah, yeah. Uh, generally, all ships are capable. There are some that are obviously going to be less capable, but there isn't a ship right now that cannot, at, that is tier five or tier six that cannot clear the content. That where you can't do your share of the damage. I have so many Tetron Isomags. Is there any good build for it? Oh yeah. Um Tetron's Tetron's, you know, honestly still very viable. People don't generally like it because phaser disruptor plasma are getting most of the attention right now. But 
Petreon's still very capable. You you just build it just like you would a phaser build or a disruptor build, except you're using Tetrion instead. And the biggest difference is you're not going to have like a Terran cannon. You're just going to be using another normal dual heavy cannon instead. And like that, that'll be a little bit of a hit, but it's not a game breaking amount. Been thinking about getting a projector for gaming. Has anyone tried it? Uh, from what I recall, the issue with a projector is generally going to be the, just like the latency. And you need to have a really dark room for it. You might be better off, Dan, just picking up like a nice uh, large TV. Like pick up like a 65 inch one or something and... Won't have to deal with a lot of the issues you would deal with with a projector. Yeah. The issue too with builds that are like full meta, Valerie, is that they're, you know, really high end meta chasing builds are optimized for the meta environment. So they're, they're typically going to be optimized for going in with the team into something like Infected. So that they're very effective, but they may not be what you'd want to bring into day-to-day -day gameplay, like if you're just doing randoms. Yeah, the warp crystals are crazy. Yeah, I mean, TVs in general have gotten a lot cheaper over time. Anyone looking forward to the 10th bundle? Um... So the 10th bundle, I did a video going or a stream going over it recently. It, it, it's still good. The 48 inch, you, you've got a 48 inch OLED. I currently, um, I have a 32 inch monitor in front of me now. Um, it's 4K 144 Hertz. It's uh, the, this KTC mini LED one that I picked up off Amazon not too long ago. And then on my left is a 28 inch 4K monitor. Um, I'm really happy with this, this uh, ATC one. So the prices, the price here is not what I paid to, to be clear, but th this is the one that I picked up. It's mini LED, so it can get really bright. It's the best HDR monitor I've, I've ever had. So when I'm watching like an HDR movie, this thing gets bright. Absurdly bright. And with the, the deal that they had, the, the price that I paid for it was like 520. But I, I didn't think that was that bad. And I was upgrading from a 27 inch uh, 1440p monitor, so really nice improvement there. Um, has the story goal been reached? Not not yet. We're about a tenth of the way there. I expected it would probably take a, a couple couple streams to do. Just listening to the tips from stream today, I've added 100k DPS to my ISA runs. I'm going to do some more Borg stuff, but I'm going to swap to a DPS build. Uh, the Sulabon Silic is a very, very capable little platform. It has the IFF console on it um, with the, the C-Store version. That is crucial to, to really high-end runs right now. Um, but the, the ship itself is, is also pretty decent for... For being a carrier platform it's versatile you can set it up as a bit of a tankier platform you can set it up to do dps on it, it it's very versatile it's a decent ship yeah the the ultra wides are nice 
The first aft weapon here is the Pavan Proton Omni Beam. Um, on a CSV build, this is going to be getting fire at will for the entire duration I have CSV up. If you're running a set Omni on your build, it really should be the Pavan Proton Omni. It's it's the best set Omni in the game, and nothing else even comes remotely close to it. Um, Star Trek Resurgence is uh, more of a story focused game. I haven't really I haven't, I haven't played it. I haven't looked at it a ton. I remember looking at a trailer for it, seeing some reviews for it, but yeah, it just is not something that was particularly of much interest to, to me. Okay. I'm going to de-slot Temporal Surge. The reason I de-slot this is because if you go into a map with this slotted, it'll be on a two minute cooldown. Whereas if you reslot it upon entering the map, it will not be on cooldown. I am using a 7900 XTX. Okay, I'm going to do a cure found advanced public queue. Yeah, it's from the the first part of the event campaign this year. The the Pavo event, so the buyout is still available for it if you missed it. So yeah, I, I'm on a 7900 XTX right now. Um, what are my thoughts on the various GPU trading programs? I, I was really looking at them. Okay. I was looking at trading in the, the refurbished 3090 I got when I got it back from Nvidia and Jawa offered me like $380. Newegg offered the same amount that they're, they're offering such a low amount for some of these cards. It, it, it's rough. My 7,900 XTX, I did get a decent offer on when I put it into new egg, just out of curiosity, they, they offered me 700 for it. Um, because when I was having the issues with the, the drivers, I was looking at maybe going to a 4080 super or like a 4070 TI super, but I I've sorted those issues out. Um, and the way I did that, The way that I uh, resolved my issues with the 7900 XTX, I can, I don't know where my camera is here. I took this out. Because I had it on a vertical riser. And these vertical risers, wow, my hair is really bad behind the headset. Um, but these vertical risers have been known to cause issues, and I think that was causing my issues. I'm getting a build later this month. I'm torn between a 4080 and a 4090. Go for a 4080 Super. Don't don't bother with the 4090. The the 4090 really powerful, but it's just so expensive. You're going to deal with the the potential issues with the uh, the power cable on that. The the 4080 Super uses the same 12 volt high power cable, but it doesn't draw as much power, so you don't have the the same level of risk as the 4090 has. Um, but, but there's just a lot of risk with the, the 4090 and I mean, if I'm buying a, a GPU, I don't want to have to deal with a bunch of BS most of the time. I, I know I did with the 7,900 XTX initially. Um, but I, I think right now I'd go for 4080 super for the price to performance. Um, what headphones do I use? I alternate between the Bear Dynamic DT 1990 Pros and the 1770 Pros. Um, right now I'm on the 1770 Pros, which are closed back. And if you're buying them new, they're atrociously expensive. I purchased both of them used off of eBay and hardware swap a couple years back. 
for like under half the price of what the new ones are. Yeah, the 4080 Super is what I'd go for right now. I mean, if, if money is no limit, then the 4090, sure. But also keep in mind that the uh, the 50 series is going to be dropping later this year. Got a Borg Raptor. Yeah, the, the 50 series is coming out later this year, probably around Q4. So I just don't think I would spend, you know, like 1700 on a 4090 right now. I think a 4080 Super is a very solid card. And I think that's going to cover what you're wanting to, to do. How much would I get from my old card by something like eBay or something? So if I sell if I sell my 3090 on eBay, it's going to be going for a lot more than what Jawa and them are offering. So let me look that up. So 3090s right now, if I look at old items, like 900 bucks, like 800 to 900 bucks for for a mirror. So like Jawa and New Egg offering three, three to four hundred, not not a great deal. Michael, how's it going? Um I I haven't been hearing anything. Spectral, it might be worth, yeah, just like just uninstalling and reinstalling the, the game to, to see if that resolves that. Or just nuking the uh like if you're going into your stow folder, go to Star Trek Online Live, uh go to pigs, and then just nuke like the, the sound.hog file here, and that would re-download the, the sounds for the game. So if something did get screwed up, you know, that might be something worth looking at. Or you can do a force verify in the launcher to see if that helps. Do the patrols scale with character level? Yes. How does it compare to the Intel Arc for, for Stow? Uh, the Arc GPUs, the Arc GPUs perform very well in Stow. Um, but you do have to turn off, I think it's like Bloom and one of the other settings to, to make it from, or, or to, to stop it from causing some lighting issues, because there will be some weird lighting popping up with the, the arc cards with the normal settings. Yeah. And ultimately, the, the biggest limitation for, for Stow is the uh, the UI. So no matter what your GPU is, the, the UI is going to just tank your FPS. So uh, right now uncapped at 4K, I'm at like 190 FPS here on ground. And if I turn the UI off, it didn't go up at all. That's weird. Usually turning the UI off would cause the, uh, the FPS to go up a fair bit.
Yeah, some parts of the UI, like if I open up my DOF window here, you see it's already dropped a little bit. Now, if I open up my roster, watch what happens to the FPS. Oh, you can't see it because my face is blocking it. Rip. Okay, at the top right. Top right is the FPS. It's sitting at 180, like mid 180s right now. If I open the DOF window up, drops a little bit. If I open the roster page, <laughs> it just cut in half pretty much. Um, you see, Waldo, how's it going? Dark Ghost, have you seen, so th this is completely off topic, but I've been looking at the, uh, you know, the build a PC subreddit and there's been deals popping up on Newegg with this zip promo that they have going on. So. Like right now, there's. There's a 7800 XT for 425 with the zip promo that they have going on. Zip is a pay over four type service. Um, there's just like a four to six dollar fee for using it, but. Right now with the promo, you get 12% off for, for using Zip, so it's worth paying that that fee to do so. Um, and you can see here that there's an ASRock Phantom Gaming 7900 XT for 608 with the promo that they have going on right now, which is pretty good, to be honest. That's that's a pretty good price for, for those GPUs. Asner Sage, how's it going? No news about the CM yet. Yeah, um, so if you look at the Build PC subreddit, Dark Ghost, they have info about it. Um, basically, if you were going for, for this, you know, you're using this, this code here. Just put that in the cart. And then the other code here is zip game. There you go. So you just have to pay with zip. So when you go to checkout, it'll make you swap over to the zip thing to get that discount. But once you do, that's 12% off. So if you're looking to buy a 7900 XT, that, that sale's going on till the 22nd or until funds run out. So pretty good price. And you would have to pay like 150 something today if you were wanting to do that. Yeah, AMD is in a really good position for price price performance. Like if I was looking for a new GPU right now and I didn't care about ray tracing, this this 7800 XT or that 7900 um, XT that I just showed with the, the sales going on right now, those those really are not that bad. Like there's there's some good prices there with that that sale so i'll drop a link to that uh build a pc post for the 7900 xt or do you have a dark yeah gamers nexus is usually my go-to for uh for for looking at um like gpu or cpu reviews and I see that there's a spicy video from Gamers Nexus right now about EK imploding. I'll be watching that after the, uh, the uh, stream here. Yeah, there is uh, the Golden Rabbit edition or whatever. Yeah, that that is out also. Go ahead and post it. Yep, let me grab that again here. Okay. Dark Ghost, there you go. There's the 7900 XT uh, deal. Yeah, I, I like Jay. Jay's cool for especially like on the, the water cooling side of things. But um, 
GN or Hardware Unboxed, yeah, get get much more in depth with stuff. Terrible. But you want me to to say thanks, Steve, or on to you, Steve, Warpcore? Is that what you've been waiting for? Yeah, Jay, uh, Gamers Access, Paul's Hardware, um, Level One Text or Wendell, you know, really good stuff there. Gamers Nexus shill. I mean, I've got the GN toolkit behind me. I've got, I do, I've got one of the GN posters around here somewhere. And for for YouTuber merch, you know, I've got got my LTT screwdriver. I honestly have gotten quite a bit of use out of this thing. I'm glad I picked it up. Yeah, Linus, I, I, I still watch LTT. I'm on I I've been subscribed to their float plane for a while. I uh I don't agree with everything that they do, but I, if you go in with different expectations, then I think their their content's fine. But yeah, Tech Jesus knows best, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, what what content do we have up next? Hive is back up, Kidmer is back up. I liked the April Fools video that LTT did. That that was good. I think it did a good really good job there. We're going to do a hive. I'm going to slot the Excelsior 2 console on instead of Agony cuz things die too fast for Agony in this lower difficulty content. Okay. Um I need to de-slot Temporal Surge. This is the annoying thing about Temporal Surge, is that you have to de-slot it before going into each map you want to use it on. Okay, Hive, Hive Onslaught Advanced, Public Queue, I'm going in. Yeah, I wasn't too thrilled about what happened there either. L LTT's got their, you know, they they've got their own set of issues, and for for me, like, just have to go in with a more of a an expectation of the content being entertaining rather than, you know, necessarily educational. Um, if you want something that's going to be informative, that's where the other CCs come into play. Like. GN, uh, hardware and box, like they they go really in depth on things. Yeah, I remember. GN sometimes gets too in depth on some topics, but I, I like having that level of depth because. You you can take as much or little from it as you want, basically. And they've also got Monitor Unbox, which is also pretty good. All that OLED shilling. Cheops has a silic in here and has just given me five stacks of friendship. I very much appreciate that, Cheops. Your efforts are futile. Destroy this vessel. 
and I will claim another. So look in your door and unlock their consoles? Absolutely. This That'd be great. Is not the end. Can boffs learn more than one specialization? Yeah, you can have all specializations trained to each your bridge officers. Steppers? 1.18? Yeah, that was crazy. Cheops, thank you for the buffs. Friendship is OP. Yeah, uh, you can have your bridge officers trained up with each specialization. Uh, and then you can just swap between them. Like you can see here, this one's got every spec on it. And if I want to swap, I would just go and hit that button to swap it over. Become one with us. Yeah, I thought that was fun, though. Like, that th that level of speed, that that's where things start to really get fun. You know, for, for like, uh, just going in, trying to, to set speed records, things like that. That's where it gets, you know, really interesting. Uh, seriously fast? Yeah. The Iwani console's uh, really nice, and Cheops was hitting a second one of those on me. Oh, look at that. Infected's back up. The only queue I can do. Hey, I'm doing public queue for Infected, the Conduit Advanced, if you want to join. Yeah, that, that was Cheops in there giving me friendship stacks, the Iwani console, and then two bays of type 7. So there, there was one support in there. See, if it's advanced, I can handle the, the public, but if I go into to elites, I want to have a coordinated team because elites are grim. elites All are quite a bit different. The star base have we must and I, I would very much like there to be some level of coordination in that type of content. Cheops, got Michi in here. Michi, how's it going? That was really bad positioning wise. <laughs> that was so bad positioning wise. <laughs> Sensors confirmed. Michi, thank you for taking that side out. However, our scans of the Starbase are still being disrupted. We will need to send an away team there to look for survivors. Uncommon phaser beam mark two with our modifiers. Nineteen seconds, was it? Michi, uh, that was fun. Uh, my piloting was very, very rough, but thank you for that. Is there a go-to ship for FA builds? And basically just pick what you are going to like flying the most. Um, if you're looking to push like theoretical max DPS, I mean, the Vodwar Juggernaut is really hard to beat. I, I think even for FA, that's probably going to be your top, top platform. Here's bad too. 
Yeah, the, the structured runs are really fun. They, they are a completely different way to play the game. And it does suck that console players don't have any way to do that type of stuff over there. I don't think it was, because I, I had an ISA the other day. Yeah, my upload right now is 1622. Ah, uh, yes, the inquiry was, yeah. I'm just looking at a message here. Yeah, I, if I recall, Giant Dutch Viking, I saw your what you're looking at doing for console basically is having it read from the, the chat window. My concern is, is that with how fast, with how much combat we do see, I don't know if it, if that window is going to show everything. Uh, Chell, it's it's a very, very elitist ship. Your favorite. You missed my poor piloting. I'll see it on the VOD and send me a message afterwards to let me know how bad it was. <laughs> I know. Just know I know it was bad. I'm still sad that I caved and moved off the Delkina to this for, for runs. But like I... Like I've said, uh, the, the experimental weapon just in that really high end sub 30 second environment, the, the experimental weapons just can't keep up because they don't get haste like your other weapons do. If they if they got haste, the Delkina would would be even better. But with them not getting haste from consoles like the Iwani console, they, they fall behind a turret at that environment. I'm just reading a message here. Am I currently using the Pavan Omni? Yep. The Pavan Omni is on basically every build I'm doing right now. That's a best in slot uh, item to have on. Even on a CSV build, you know, it, it, when you hit CSV, it gets fire at will for the entire duration of your CSV. So that's got as good uptime on fire at will as your cannons do with CSV. So. It, it performs very well, especially with that resonant shock effect on it. The, the 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 fact that it's then getting fire at will from the CSV. Really, really high performing. <laughs> Have I moved away from uncon abilities? I am. I'm pretty much optimizing for, for what I'm doing right now in the game, for, for what I'm doing when I'm actually playing. I'm optimizing for environments that are too fast for Uncon. So my my current builds are not factoring in Uncon at all, because by the time Uncon would would come into play, the, the run's been done for 30 seconds. Am I using phasers on this build? I am using a Viridian Plasma. I like the colors of them and the visuals. But yeah, you could do, I mean, what with what I've been doing here in advanced, you could do it as well with 
phaser, disruptor, like whatever if you want. You could do a cannon setup just to, to make people really angry. Like a just mixed rainbow type build. The mechanics of Stow can be so intricate. My tactic, if I don't know what I'm doing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's been about two and a half hours. I wasn't sure how long I was going to be streaming today, but I've got some stuff to do with the family here in the next half hour or so. So I want to go get prepped for that. So I'm going to cut things uh, short here. Headless Horseman, um, I'll send you a message on, on Discord. Um, if that's, I completely forgot to mention if that was something you wanted to do today or another day, or if you want me to like record it or whatever. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll send you a message here in a moment. Um, what's the beam version of Withering Barrage called? There's entwined tactical matrices, but it requires you to, to hit a, a torpedo firing mode to get the FAW. It's not anywhere near as good. Um, there's also redirecting arrays, but that requires you being shot at. Endeavor, how's it going? So, so intricate that most of the devs don't even fully understand them. Oof. Yeah, I started this stream really early today. My my sleep schedule as normal is messed up and I woke up at like 2 a.m. So. Yeah, this this is middle of the day for me. Dark Ghost. Golfo, Axel. No, it has a lot of time first need to figure out if it's worth it. Gotcha. Ben Dan, Badwick. OK, thank you all for for tuning in and um, for, for channel members, there, there's going to be a, a member stream here um, probably in the next day or so that I'm going to announce later today. Um, I've had a members only video I was working on. I did a take of it. I did not like it. So I'm going to just do it as a live stream scheduled a day out in advance um, where I'm going to go through and talk about Dolph Packs with you guys. So if you remember, uh, stay tuned for that because, again, I was going to do it as a video, but I... Just did not like it. Um, I feel that woke up early and rebuilt my strike to try and break my record. Uh, you should talk to, to Steven about the strike. Steven Gilgalad, he's been doing the uh, the strike for, for his runs recently. He's been enjoying it quite a bit. How many of my tunes have I bothered to level up their reps on? Very few of them. I do not hate myself enough to do the reputations on every character. Nicholas, thank you for watching. Is Guys, Wolf. Okay. Thank you all for for tuning in. And I oh, I guess I should look for someone to rate on Twitch. Is there anyone you guys would recommend? Um, casual respawn. There we go. Brilliant. How's it going? Okay, let me get this this raid out quick on the Twitch side. Name spelled correctly. There we go. Okay, Twitch side is raiding out. And YouTube side here, as soon as this goes, I stream. Again, thank you all for tuning in. See you guys around.